so technical engineering as the name suggest uh, you know geo is earth and okay. technical means, yeah technical means the technology of earth this is the branch of civil engineering so uh, civil engineering has four or five uh, major sub branches for example structural engineering which mm-hmm. works on the infrastructure which are mm-hmm. built which we generally see then those structures are generally built on some foundation right mm. you need to yeah. have pile foundation or rough foundation mm. there are different types of foundation on which those superstructures are generally built so we geotechnical engineers uh, generally design those underground foundations so geotechnical engineering we generally uh, are not seen visibly i mean outside people can't see us because we are all always below the ground level but mm. without us the structure can sustain yeah. us yeah there are other subjects as well environmental engineering is there water resource in- engineering is there and transportation engineering is there so geotechnical engineering is a branch which is which is sort of a combination of structural engineering uh, environmental engineering transportation engineering and also water resource engineering how because structural engineering you have to design the soil i mean the structure overhead but uh, you have to know the properties of the soil on which you have to uh, place this structure so we have to know basics of structural engineering as well geo environmental engineering uh, works with how the uh, the presence of uh, various microorganisms or viruses and bacteria in the uh, soil uh, i mean help you uh, i mean for example you have uh, a garbage dumping uh, ground right mm. so there different bacteria will be working on the gases will be produced and uh, how this uh, uh, this uh, the presence of uh, this environmental microorganisms are are interacting with the uh, your your ground surface uh, it's taken care of by the geo environmental surface then uh, you have uh, geo hazard mitigation where you uh, you try to work on that uh, different uh, uh, hazard mitigation uh, uh, perspective for example uh, you have this landslide happening you know mm-hmm. for yeah. or or landslide happening a few days back uh, in himachal pradesh there was a huge landslide yes, yes. so uh, those uh, landslide mitigations and geo hazard mitigations are taken care of geotechnical engineering uh, engineers and uh, those underground tunnels tunnels uh, those are uh, which are required in uh, roadway tunnels railway, uh, yeah. railway tunnels as well as uh, for uh, creating this hydro power plants right so there mm-hmm. also you need the tunnel so all these are taken care of Uh, by the geotechnical engineers uh, right okay. so okay. geotechnical engineering uh, is a branch or uh, is one of the very crucial branch of uh, civil engineering uh, which works on mainly predominantly on the foundation or okay. the uh, underground uh, structuration of the whole structure which are going to be built over it so uh, what exactly you, is your area of research in that uh, field Yes, yes, yes. So uh, uh, the area which I am working on uh, is more like uh, a multidisciplinary because mm-hmm. nowadays uh, people are not uh, I'm sticking to only one subject. Okay, that is, as I have just mentioned, geotechnical itself is covering structures, environment, and uh, geo hazard and every other thing. So, uh, for example, the basic idea uh, for my work is to understand the crushability of sand. what is crushability of sand you know that uh, the big chunks of uh, rocks are generally yeah. when you apply load it, it break down and uh, you you you, uh, you might have uh, seen that all those ballast are laid in the railway tracks when yes. the uh, train moves over it 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 helps in the shock absorption of that okay. of that uh, railway track but during this process you it is taking the whole load of the uh, trains right but it, it does not have to take the load all the time a train will go on it come on come over it and it will pass away all right okay, yeah. so uh, momentarily it will experience a huge amount of load then there will be relaxation of load all right mm. so this thing will uh, uh, result in this breakage of this ballast so with breakage the property of those uh, small particles which are laid in the railway tracks will change also you can't say that okay i have put the ballast and i i forget about all those things i forget about all those things then the railway tracks are going to uh, i mean there there can yeah. um, train accidents as well if you are not taking proper care of that so my work is that okay if you apply a load on a uh, certain amount of sand particles for example with rate change for example you are pressing it slow or pressing it at higher speed how these things are going to change and whether the amount of crushing okay you have a one particle you uh, you 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 hit it slowly i mean gradually you increase the load 
and you give a impact load right yeah. so how these things are going to uh, uh, the, the the particle is going to behave under these two different types of load where uh, this is the main idea right so i have used discrete element method so mm -hmm. i i know you might have heard about finite element method yeah, exactly. right finite element method is a continuum method to solve uh, a continuum so similarly discrete element method is a uh, numerical tool where you can uh, i mean model each and every particle since i am dealing with particles so we can't work on continuum continuum is a continuous body yeah right for example a uh, material which you know all the properties at each and every point but the particles are if you are taking a sand sample some of the places will be voids which hmm. will be either air or water some will be uh, will be uh, i mean uh, circular particles so you this is a non homogeneous heterogeneous media right yes, so exactly. for all uh, yeah so uh, you, you have to uh, model the each and every particle so dm helps in that you can model each and every particle and track the movement of each and every particle in a sample so i apply the load i create a 3d dm model dm sample apply the load and try to see whether the amount of crushing is changing and how these things are changing okay then then you need as engineers you need continuum models as well why continuum models continuum models are nothing but your mathematical models so uh, it will it's a uh, black box uh, by which you can say okay you are giving for example 100 kpa load or 100 ton of load or a train is moving okay mm -hmm. how much will be the deformation of that subject so this idea you can get from those continuum models so from based on the dm understanding which we have got uh, we try to propose a continuum model as well which works well with uh, different uh, uh, different uh, types of materials as well uh, this type of uh, understanding is applicable not only in railway movements in designing of high speed railway movements but also uh, designing of dam where the interaction of the i mean uh, these water. Uh, water bodies with the, with the with the soil can also go for crushing or as i have just mentioned landslide mitigation where uh, the crushing of the sand layer to between two layers can go for uh, i mean uh, failure it can initiate failure so all these things can be taken care of by using my uh, uh, understanding which we i have reported in my thesis yeah so how exactly you are going to define this granular sizes yes yes so uh, it's it's a very genuine question that why uh, we are not doing some real scale experiment and uh, we are doing with model you see uh, the real scale experiment uh, is 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 is, uh, is very important and in the second part in the next phase of my research which uh, i will do or i will do with my students uh, this will include the experimental part but the issue was some of the researchers have already done done that experimental portion uh, mm -hmm. the only thing is what's happening inside the particle you can't say from the experiments all right so if you are able to mimic the actual experimental particles in your model inside the sample what is happening how much load is uh, i mean acting on one particle and when this particle is going to crush all mm -hmm. these things you can uh, take care of by using dm so dm helps you to mimic the actual experimental model to a uh, numerical model from numerical model you gather more data and from those data you can predict that okay you you are having an experimental sample of a, for example of my hand size then hmm. you are implementing the same ideology and same uh, understanding which you have gathered from those experimental as well as numerical understanding to model actual field scale uh, experiments either you will apply, apply those in railway tracks or you will apply in any geohazard mitigation system something like that so yes uh, the numerical portion is one 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 uh, one aspect of it which we have used to understand the micro mechanics of this uh, uh, individual uh, particles which will be used to uh, further predict the macroscopic behavior at the uh, real field scale level yeah. okay so in this uh, tool you are going to define the sizes of that uh, sand particle also uh yes uh, you can uh, for example i have taken one representative size okay, okay. so for example one uh, one size of the particle was taken as 1 mm or 3 mm 1 mm to 3 mm generally a boulder is uh, sized between for example 1 cm or 3 cm you can exactly uh, do the same thing uh in dm you can model uh, whatever size you want to do you okay. you create a real sample and accordingly you choose your size of the particle so i have chosen size of the particle such that it is mimicking mimicking 
a an actual experimental sample. We have done some experiments as well in our geotechnical laboratory in IIT Kanpur with uh, materials which are crushable in nature, right? Okay. So I, I know uh, you might have seen those uh, aquarium sands. Uh, yeah. In aquarium, yeah, those yeah. Uh, small uh, particles are there. So yeah, these yeah. are very crushable in nature. So we are we our main concern is to see how crushing is going affected with different type rates of loading. So uh -huh. we started with those aquarium sands as well. So not only those aquarium sands, but also uh, various of uh, I mean most of our oil reserves and gas reserves. You know Bombay High, uh, the yeah. western coast of India, as well as the eastern coast of India, the Krishna and Godavari region, the whole yeah. eastern coast as well. There are main source of uh, uh, this hydrocarbon resources, as well as uh, this uh, uh, methane hydrate bearing sands are also found there, which are uh, future energy sources. So they are uh, situated in a region, which is, I mean, you will be astonished to know that these are full of carbonate type of sand. Those mm -hmm. equidium sands are actually procured from those sites. So if you want to get uh, extract gas or oil from those areas and the particle or, or the layer of rock gets crushed uh, due to to this extraction process, then there is a chance of huge tsunami uh, opening mm -hmm. at the seabed due to okay. this extraction process. So if you know beforehand the property of the material using my uh, understanding, you will definitely uh, apply the load uh, I mean, uh, wisely so that this uh, all the hazards will not take.